Have you ever found that the first thing to go when things get super busy is our own personal health? Um, I don't know about you, but that tends to be the first thing that I pull from. Are you going to say yeah, something? Same. No. Okay. Same. Uh, and, and I find like one of the areas that I do pull from is my sleep. Um, I had this uh, uh, limiting belief really early on. It's really still built in there. It's like, come on, I don't need to sleep now. Like I can sleep later, right? Or some people say I can sleep when I'm dead, right? <laughs> But like when you think about that, you're like, logically, if I don't sleep as much, I can get in so much more things, be so much more productive and get so much more, not only done, but make the impact that I truly want to make. Um, the only problem with that is that when you realize how you show up when you don't get the right amount of sleep, yeah, right? That's why we wanted to tackle today, like how to get into your most peak high performance. Um, because really when it's what it's about is, taking care of you to get to the point so you can perform on a level that's above what everybody else can normally perform on. Because most people are burning the candle from both ends like I was doing before. And what I noticed is that when I showed up, I was showing up as a zombie and everything that I do was only half to its potential. But once I got some of the things that we're gonna talk about here today under wraps, once I thought about like, how can I use this to actually make me a stronger entrepreneur, to make me a strong, stronger father and a husband, to get my health under point so that I can have that energy to show up, it totally changed the game for us. Now, we're going to be talking a lot about different strategies that we personally learned, both through reading some really powerful books, including Sleep Smart, uh, Sleep Smarter, mm -hmm. um, as well as a productivity product um, product project. Products. There we go. Very, very powerful books because that's what we love to do is bring the best of what we've learned, what's worked and what hasn't worked. And that's what we like to do with you guys today. So if you're ready to tap into the peak performance, find ways of getting more sleep when you don't have the extra time, let's go. It's time to redefine leadership. Welcome to Modern Leadership, where we see things differently. Our channel is all about empowering entrepreneurs like you to achieve the next level of success in business and life. We believe that you can create a massive impact in the world without compromising your personal life or family time to do so. We're committed to providing you with actionable tips and strategies weekly to make that possible. So if you're ready to become a modern leader and make a lasting difference in the world, consider subscribing. Turn on notifications and dive into our community. We want to thank you for being here because the world needs your leadership now more than ever. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, really excited to dive into today's uh, powerful training. But first, I want to welcome all the new people to our modern leadership world here today. We have a bunch of new subscribers. Um, we appreciate you so much. We have open arms here grateful to have you on the team. We also have a few new Inner Circle members, including Chris, Chris Saxon. Welcome to the team, brother. And then we have a bunch of Inner Circle members who are here, including Carmen and Anna and Julie and Michael, and of course, Kurt. Welcome back, everybody. And you know what? Actually, before we actually get started, let's kind of share some of the, some of the an idea that we had related to the Inner Circle um, that we're going to be doing. So for those of you guys who are in the inner circle or are interested in learning about our community, what we've decided to do, we talked about this yesterday, was actually feature some of our inner circle members on our live streams. So starting in two weeks, we're actually going to bring some of the business owners that we have inside of our network to basically allow them to share the stage with us, to get on YouTube, to share how they can, how people can work with you, share a little bit about what you do, how you help people, and be a part of the stream with Teresa and I because we want to be able to share the stage with you. And that's one of the big things that we have um, coming up for our inner circle team this year. And that is like, we want to get you in front of as many people as possible so you can create that know, like, and trust. And what better way than actually coming on to our show and us being able to ask you powerful questions questions to bring up the best in you. So if you're a part of the inner circle, I'm going to post up inside of our app after this so that you can apply to be one of those people who comes on the show. Um, if you don't want to, you absolutely do not have to, but this is one of those opportunities. Um, and I'm excited to bring that with you guys or to you guys in about two weeks. We're going to start bringing uh, miscellaneous uh, business owners on to really share your mission with the world. Because I truly believe that every single one of you has a powerful mission that you can make a huge impact. And if you need a little bit of influence in the beginning, we are here to help support you. We have uh, over 125,000 followers on all social media and we will blast it out and get as many people here so that you can be in front of them and share some of your wisdom and knowledge with them. So that's what we're doing for our inner circle. If you're not a part of that, you can click on the join button below and you'll learn a little bit about it. It's like $10 a month to actually have access to these kind of calls. But today is one of the calls that we open up to everybody, right? We open mm -hmm. up to everybody on YouTube twice a month. We get to dive in and really talk about more broad subjects related to getting into the best shape of your life 
creating a business that you truly love and connecting with your family on a deeper level while being able to excel at all of those and also getting some sleep because we're going to talk about that today. Yeah. Are you ready to go? Yep. Okay. So we are going to break this down into some questions that we have for each other to really pull out a lot of the things that have been working for us um, since struggling with sleep. Now, I want to share this with you. Back when I originally started working on sleep, I was a full-time police sergeant from LAPD. Um, I worked a massive amount of overtime, had a lot of court qualified days that I needed to go into court on top of working the mornings, the graveyards, every shift you possibly know in the man, um, having to work all the holidays, trying to grow a business, having two small kids, being married to this amazing woman, like so many things that I was trying to work on. So sleep was the first thing that I pulled from. And when I realized that I was actually not showing up the way that I wanted to, then I started to do the research. And it took me several years to find out some of the things you're going to learn over the next 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and I want you to know that all of these things, you do not have to uh, um, use all of them. Just pick one or two and then come back to this call a little bit later and pick maybe one or two more because the totality of all these is really going to help you. But even if you just choose one, you're going to be better off than you were before this. So that being said, Let's dive right into it. You ready to ask the first question? Yeah, right, let's do ahead. it. Okay, so how important do you think sleep is for maintaining peak for performance as an entrepreneur? Okay, so um, let's get into why sleep is so important. And I do want to hear from you guys. I know we have um, so many incredible people who are here right now. Why do you feel like sleep is so important and meaningful to you, to the impact you're trying to make in the world, to how you show up um, on the job, off the job, in real life, with your health? Like thinking about that, like why is it so important and meaningful to you? Um, one of the things that comes up for me is um, having an autoimmune disease, which is just another step on top of all the other things that I have. Basically, what happens is my energy, if uh, when my autoimmune is in a flare, my energy is actually used against me. So it's actually used to attack my own body. <laughs> and so this actually really hinders my ability of recovering. And if I don't get enough sleep, even if I'm not in a flare, I really show up on a different level. I show up very brain fogged. Like I can't really think clearly. And Teresa will know this because I'm like, I just can't think clearly when it comes to even putting these words together. Like it's hard to word today, right? <laughs> and when I come into that specific moment, I, I automatically start to think about like, how much sleep did I get? Like, is there something else that's affecting my sleep? Is there something else that I can tweak or adjustments that I can make? Because when I show up in a brain fog, not only do I not show up well at, at in my business, not only do I not show up on YouTube, I don't show up well as a husband. I don't show up well as a parent. I don't show up where, well in multiple areas because when you have that brain fog, you can't th think through the, the um, different possibilities that are available to you right then. And you're always just focused a lot more on what's broken, wrong, or missing. This sucks. Why is this happening to me? And it's just this perpetual cycle. Mm -hmm. So when I think about like sleep and when I think about the effects that it has on entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs solve problems for a living. And if you can't think clearly, mm -hmm. how in the world are you going to be able to help other people solve their problems? How are you going to be able to uh, make a bigger impact? How are you going to be able to run the business? How are you going to be able to, to juggle the home life? How are you going to be able to focus on your health? And the answer is you can't really do it well. So either you do none of it or you do it all like at 25% of your energy. So getting back into like realizing the impact that this is going to make in your life is always that first question we like to ask is like, what kind of impact is this going to make? And I see some of you guys I've already shared. Carmen says, I can't be creative or empathetic to my students or clients 100%, right? And I know, Carmen, you're like the best teacher on the planet. And when you realize that that's how you're showing up, that's where we have to like really ask ourselves, how could I get back into you know getting more sleep? Some of the tips that we're going to share today are really going to help, right? Um, Anna says, not enough sleep makes me drag. Yes, it feels like the day goes on forever, right? <laughs> when you have energy, everything makes it makes everything easier mm -hmm. like even problems problems are not a big deal mm -hmm. but when you're exhausted even a small thing now feels like the world's coming to an end like everything's gonna come down crashing on me right and it's because we're so exhausted there's so many things like we talk physically about like how tired you can be but there's so many things mentally mm -hmm. that it's so much harder for you to find your heart voice it's so much harder for you to find the opportunities when you're exhausted because you just don't have the energy to make a decision or to think outside the box. And your body wants to consume the least amount of energy possible. And it will trick you into thinking that this is the one right, best, only way. Right. right. So yeah. that's what I would say to that is like, it's really important because it waters down everything you do. But when you have that energy, it actually makes everything you do even better. Yeah. Now for you, what are some common sleep challenges that entrepreneurs face and how can they overcome them? 
Yeah. So like we mentioned earlier, like sleep tends to be that thing that you pull from. And it's something that sometimes is automatic because you have full control of that, right? You have full control of whether, you know, you get enough sleep or, or not enough sleep. And it seems like, well, if I take if I don't sleep, I can do more throughout the day. And well, I'll just catch up. I'll just catch up on the weekend. And we kind of tend to just rely on that. And we don't realize how much damage we're actually doing uh, over time, right? Because it's not a big deal if you don't get enough sleep one night. But if you do that consistently Mm -hmm. over years and years of your life, that's when we can get in trouble, right? So pulling from sleep um, as a first step instead of thinking outside the box. So you want to actually think about like, okay, aside from sleep, because I know that it's important for me to get enough sleep and like good quality sleep, because that's like another thing that on top of that, it's like, how can I make it so that I don't have to pull from my sleep, but I can still do the things that I need to do, right? So this can get a little bit more complex because you can kind of look at all the different areas and some of the things that you might be doing that you don't necessarily need to do and actually use that to um, get some more sleep. So try to think outside the box rather than just relying on not, you know, just um, the the whole sleep thing and not getting enough sleep. Um, And then we also want to realize that wanting to do it all Um, is going to basically save us money. So for example, you decide you're going to do everything in your business because you're like, I'm not generating enough income. I need to do all of this myself. And because of that, I actually have to sacrifice sleep, right? Because there's not enough hours in the day to do everything that you want to do. So you start to convince yourself that doing all of this is actually saving you money. Mm -hmm. And maybe it is short term. But in the long term, it's actually going to cost you more money, but it's also going to cost you sleep and it's going to cost you your health. So think about like re like reframe your your mindset around this, Mm -hmm. that just because you think you want you need to do it all of your all yourself, that you're going to be actually saving yourself Mm -hmm. from from, you know, spending more money or um, like just doing all of the things is just going to make you better. It's not. Yeah, Go ahead. I was going to say, um, our brain can do so many like crazy things to trick us into thinking that we're saving stuff, mm-hmm. saving time, saving energy, saving money. Oh, yeah. Can I just tell you, like, my brain convinced me that I um, I could figure it out on my own. And then later, when I make more money, then I can pay, p- pay people or pay to learn the skill or whatever. And think about that logically. Like, <laughs> how am I going to learn a new skill or be able to make more money if I'm not learning the lesson that I need to learn, mm-hmm. right? A year from now, guys, it's not going to automatically happen. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was doing that. I was on the plan where it was the plan of like next year, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to change any of my habits or I'm not going to, I'm just going to work harder. Right? I'm going to mm-hmm. pull from this. And logically that makes no sense. Right. I get this a lot too, like even on coaching calls, because it happens to me too. It's like, you know what? Once I make more money, then I'll be able to hire you as a coach or something. It's like, well, you hire me as a coach so I can make you more money. Mm-hmm. It's not the other way around, but it's the way that our brain works. It's really tricky on how it can convince you that you're going to save money, same time, same save energy, but it just forgets about all those other things that you're actually not going to be able to show up as the best version of you. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be attracting people because your energy is going to be super low and it doesn't it doesn't want to remind you of that, right? Yeah, and there's a parallel there, right? Because when we think, you know, uh, we put our entrepreneur hat on and we say, well, well, you know, I'll do this for right now. I'll do everything myself because then eventually when I make money, then I'll be able to hire someone. But it's the same thing with sleep. You're like, right now I'm going to sacrifice sleep because this is what I need to do in order to make my business grow or spend more time with my family or whatever. But in reality, you're you're doing yourself a disservice. Yep. 100%. 100%. Okay. So now we're going to get into the third question, which is really about like, what are some of the strategies that we can implement and share with you guys that's going to be helpful. Now, I want to tell you that we're going to take this from the perspective of you don't have any more time to add to your sleep. Okay. One of the things that I want to do as somebody who is trying to lead you to more success is to not give you more things to do. Instead, help you make higher quality decisions with the time that you do have so that you can really truly show up as the best version of you without having to adding, add more stuff to your plate. Most coaches and entrepreneurs and people like that who are trying to give you, give you some advice are going to say, 
okay, completely like remove everything you're doing and add like two hours of sleep to your time. And that didn't work for me because at the time I did have a lot of things that I had going on. And so I had to figure out ways when I couldn't get more quantity, how could I get more quality? And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. All right. Now I want to share with you some of the some of the basic strategies that we learned from Sleep Smarter on how you can do this. We'll go back and forth with like the tips. Now we originally opened saying we're going to share five tips. We're actually going to share eight different ones, and we want you to pick one or two, like like the ones that you think are going to be the most helpful for you, so that you can lean into and just like document it to see how you're doing because some of these will work really well for you. Some of them might work not work well for you. Mm-hmm. It has a lot to do with your like own circadian rhythm and the things that you have um, in terms of your own body and how it works because everybody is slightly different. Even the hours and number of sleep, uh, the, yeah. the number of hours of sleep that everybody should get is different depending mm-hmm. on age and it's the, not just the, eight. their DNA and all yeah. this stuff. Yeah, it's 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 definitely different. So yeah. I'm going to go through each one of these. Now, one of the things that I um, uh, need to, to share is a little bit about like how sleep works because sleep works based off of our hormones. So our hormones, any time that our hormones are off, we could, our body not being being told like um, to go to sleep at a certain time and not to wake up at a certain time. So if there's any issues with hormones or anything related to that, you definitely should go seek doctor's attention to see what is going on and what they can do to help you out. Now, the way that this circadian rhythm works is when the sun comes up, we have a certain um, uh, uh, hormone in our body that secretes. And basically this tells us it's time to wake up. Mm -hmm. And when the sun goes down, we have another hormone that comes in and that secretes in our body. And that tells us to go to sleep. Now for some of us who are like um, shift workers, this is not good news (laughs) (laughs) because sometimes when the sun goes down, we go to work. And sometimes when the sun comes up, we go to sleep, which is not good for our body. But trust me, I do I can tell you that some of the strategies and stuff that we're going to share today absolutely did work. And it it basically is a way of tricking your body into getting back into that circadian rhythm. Okay. So tip number one, we're going to start off with get more sun early upon waking to have the best sleeping at night. So one of the things that I found is that if I get outside early in the morning and I get some sun, it basically elevates that hormone. It's cortisol. It elevates that hormone so that you can wake up. And so your body's like, oh, it's time to wake up. What this does is it helps you at nighttime be able to sleep better instead of it being like a slow rise of cortisol. If you get out into the sun, I think you said 15 or 20 minutes. I usually will do like a walk or something like that with a dog, which he's under my chair. I'm surprised he's not making a noise. But like I do that so I can um, stimulate my skin to see the sun, right? The vitamin D and everything that we normally get uh, activated from the sun. But when the the, uh, receptors on our skin see the sunlight, that's what activates cortisol and will get us to wake up quicker. So anytime that we can get outside when the sun comes up, as soon as the sun comes up, it's a good way of us telling our body it's time to wake up. So that way later in the day, we'll be able to tell our body that it's time to go to sleep. So get out in the sun as early as you can. So I have kind of a side question on that. Mm -hmm. So because the hormone that we um, secrete in the morning is cortisol. That's what wakes us up when we're actually exercising. That happens as well. Right? So what, like if you wake up early before the sun comes up and you work out, does that also help you wake up or is it kind of like the combination? It, it does, but not to the extent that the sunlight does. Okay. So yeah. So some people will notice that at nighttime, if you work out, like you have trouble getting to sleep. Mm-hmm. And this is the reason why it's personal because some people secrete a lot more um, when they're working out versus mm-hmm. some people don't secrete as much in their own body. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if you're the type of person, I'm the type of person, if I work out at night, it doesn't matter if I have pre-workout or not, I can't get to sleep. And the truth is, is even if I close my eyes and I go to sleep, my ring, which I'll talk about at the end, my ring tells me I had a terrible night's sleep because even though I feel like I'm sleeping, I'm really not. My body is still trying to catch up. It's still trying to like, it has cortisol going through its, through my body. And and like, it, it does not help me get solid sleep. There's a difference. There's sleep stages that you go through Mm -hmm. and you have to go through and fluctuate all the sleep stages. But if you have times when you're in bed and you're in bed for eight or nine hours sometimes and I wake up and it says that I got six hours of sleep, it's because like of, I I was not in that in, in and out rhythm because Mm my, um, uh, my hormones were all out of whack or I did something the night before I ate too close to bedtime, all the things that we're going to be talking about here today. So great question. All right. Tip number two, 
All right. So tip number two is avoid electronics 90 minutes before you go to bed. Now, this also is different for everybody, but the reason people say this is because there's this, um, there's a science behind Mm -hmm. us looking at electronics. Some of the, some of the science is kind of wonky on like the whole blue light thing. Mm -hmm. We don't know if that's necessarily true. However, because you are stimulated Mm -hmm. at that time, looking at, um, you know, electronics, um, that that actually causes you not to go to sleep or not to allow you to go to sleep, um, and help you stay asleep because like our minds are going, um, a million miles a minute, uh, whether because of these, you know, stimulations. Mm -hmm. So they say to avoid electronics, um, right before bed, they even say to avoid putting your cell phone next to you, like on the nightstand. We used to do that. We Mm -hmm. used to charge our phones on our nightstand and we decided to actually move them out and put them in our closet. We actually have like a charging station where all of our phones go, even our kids, because we, dare not leave (laughs) cell phones and the electronics in our kids' rooms um, for other reasons, obviously, as well. But the reason that they say to, like, kind of, like, leave that off is because of that. um, I mean, even, like, the waves in Mm -hmm. the phone itself. So it's it's best to actually avoid that as much as possible before you go to bed. Yeah. Um, And and I know for us, like, we were wearing – We have these like blue light blocking like glasses Mm -hmm. if we're like watching TV and stuff like that. I honestly have never found those to actually work. Mm -hmm. The way it works is not having electronics on for like 90 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And they say it's also because of the the, uh, temperature of the rays from the actual device is very similar to that of the sun. So it's basically a way of increasing your your cortisol, even though you don't even realize it Mm -hmm. because you're body is sensing that it's still light outside. So even if it's dark outside and you're watching electronics, you're watching a screen, your brain's like, oh, the sun's out. So I should still be awake. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and we have tried to, um, uh, what do you call that? Like, uh, uh, shortcut the system by wearing those glasses. I've personally never actually seen any results from them. Mm -hmm. I know people that have that say, ah, it's a great idea. I've actually had results with them. But for me personally, it's better if I just disconnect from electronics. And like for the last 60 minutes, like Teresa and I will talk or something like that where it's um, a little bit more of a wind down rather Mm -hmm. than looking at the electronics. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, we, like a lot of people don't wind down. They don't, there's no wind down routine. So you're like, if you know, your stress level is super high and then you're trying to go to sleep, like that's Mm -hmm. crazy. Right. Um, But going back to the, the caveat. No, I wasn't going to say it. (laughs) I was just going to do it. Um, See, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, Glasses. glasses. So I had to get reading glasses because while well, I was having trouble looking at like reading and stuff like that. However, I also found that because I was looking at my phone at night um, for long periods of time, my eyes started to deteriorate and mm-hmm. they were like super tired. So that's another thing is like if you're actually looking at a screen, especially like a small screen, your phone, um, it's putting a strain in your eyes. So that that will be something that will wear down your eyes, but also it's just going to like make make you feel all weird right before bed. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of us use electronics a lot more than we used to, right? Yeah, of Two course. Our bodies yeah. are kind of getting used to it. All right. So tip number three, let's go b- real quick. Tip number one was get out in the sun early. Tip number two is avoid electronics 90 minutes for bed for the same science reasons. Tip number three is caffeine can affect hormones. So try to avoid caffeine eight hours before bed. Mm-hmm. Kurt. I'm talking to you, my friend. <laughs> oh my gosh, you didn't call that. <laughs> so being able to avoid um, caffeine up to eight hours before bed is an important part of the process. I can't say that I'm 100% good with that, but caffeine does affect your hormones um, and how you're able to show up and whether or not you're able to get deep sleep. I have some, I've had a lot of friends who are like, nope, I can drink a cup of coffee and go right to bed. And I've actually challenged them to see how much solid sleep they get and they do not get solid sleep. Even people are like, I could just go to sleep right after I eat because it's it internally, it actually does activate certain parts of your body that you can't outthink. <laughs> so no matter if like um, you're somebody who can drink it and just go to bed or not, giving yourself some time and some space is really important. Mm-hmm. They say between six to eight hours. I try to make it, you know, six to eight hours. Sometimes I don't work, uh, doesn't work out, but I also do, I have a way of tracking my sleep every night. And I'll share that, like I said, in a minute, but, but when I do have caffeine later at night, like I have a, some type of training or whatever, and I need to have like a little bit more of like 
um, a little bit of energy, right? I noticed that I do not get solid sleep and the next day I'm like extremely exhausted. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to caffeine, um, it affects your hormones. So use it sparingly, especially, of course, you can use it in the morning time, whatever you're going to do, but try not to use it close to bedtime. All right, next one. Okay, the next one is the money sleep zone, which is between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So there's this window of time during the night mm -hmm. that is, is called the money the money sleep zone because that's when you secrete the most HGH, which is the human growth. Human growth. <laughs> Thank you. And that is what helps you recover from the day. So if you don't have the ability to recover from each day, imagine how that builds up, mm -hmm. right? In a negative way. So this like zone of sleep um, is something that people really encourage others to do simply because our bodies do this naturally. Now, of course, there are people who can't sleep at that time, like shift workers. So that really kind of messes up their circa circadian rhythm. So that is like one tip that if you can be asleep during that time. Yeah. They said between 10 and two is when your body detoxifies itself and then it has its higher, highest level of human growth hormone, which means you're going to be more likely to recover for the next day. Have you ever had that where, I don't know, for my shift workers out there where you don't get to sleep between then. And then when you get closer to like six, seven in the morning, you just have this like weird kind of like taste in your mouth and just like this weird, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of like a funk going on in your brain is because your brain hasn't been able to take the toxins and get rid of them. And this is one of the big reasons why they say shift workers, um, especially that's why they su suffer from a lot of like cancer and sleep problems and issues like that, because they have this buildup of um, of the toxins and they actually don't allow it to be released. Right. So, um, if you can get between or between 10 and two, 10 PM and 2 AM, um, if you can get some sleep between that time, cause you will get more effects between 10 and two than you will for the whole other rest of the, the, the time you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Um, so 10 to two is incredibly important. All right. Next one is tip number five. And that is we sleep in approximate an hour and a half sleep cycles, which means when you go to sleep, you go through this like cycle of flowing through like stage one, all the way to stage four, all the way back to stage two. Like it, it's kind of like this crazy like cycle that they have going on. You don't need to know all the details about that. But what you do need to know is to get from the first through the entire set of stages is about an hour and a half. One of the things when I heard this is he was talking about, he said, okay, let's say that you can only sleep for um, six hours and 45 minutes he actually encouraged people to sleep only for six hours, meaning not just lay in bed, by the way. I mean, laying in bed and when you actually fall asleep, trying to time it so that it's exactly within an hour and a half. So um, six hours, seven and a half, nine hours, because when you actually wake up in the middle of a sleep cycle, um, it actually makes you more tired because you haven't been able to complete that entire cycle. Now, this is something that I don't want you to like overanalyze and to spend all of your time because that's what Mr. Mark did. Whenever I hear numbers and statistics, I'm like, I've got to get exactly 6.5. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, well, if I sit down and I go to sleep at seven minutes, then I can time it. Don't get so <laughs> crazy as that, but just know that it's this hour and a half kind of blocks is the sleep time that we can get really um, good solid sleep. So think about that when it comes to like the next time you're going to lay down, try to be in that time frame so that you can feel what it's like when you do get that time. Mm -hmm. When you do, I would highly encourage you to ask yourself like, do I feel better when I got six hours rather than six and a half? Do I feel better if I got seven and a half instead of eight? Like really asking yourself because you'll realize that some of these things, like you're like, wow, I actually do feel way better even though I got less sleep. Why is that? It's because you didn't start a sleep cycle and then wake up in the middle of it before you were able to capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. So that is tip number five. We sleep in one and a half hour sleep cycles. Right? Okay. And tip number six is consistently go to bed and wake up at the same time. Yeah. So this is something that people have a lot of trouble with, mm -hmm. um, especially for night owls, right? Mm -hmm. But the 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 reason that we have to kind of keep a consistent uh, sleep cycle or consistent um, routine to go to bed and to wake up is because our bodies do get used to that. Mm -hmm. And we we can capitalize on that because that way we're consistently getting enough sleep and we're going with our circ circadian rhythm. So if you're constantly changing the the time that you're going to sleep or the time that you're waking up, you're just really throwing that off and that's mm -hmm. not going to benefit you at all. So 
Yeah, one of, one of the things I remember like hearing, by the way, I don't know if you heard Santa Claus is here. <laughs> no, our puppy goes over and rings the bell every time he has to go to the bathroom. But sometimes if we're on a call, he's like, oh, I can get mom and dad's attention if I go over here. So, but he's good. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, in terms of um, in terms of going to bed and waking up, what he suggested, he said like, hey, if you're going to go and get more sleep or less sleep, keep it like within the hour. So if you're going to like on the weekends, you're like, I'm going to sleep in, keep it within an hour because your body will be able to adjust to that much better other than like a two hour or three hour adjustment. Like your body is now going to have to try and rewrite mm -hmm. this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And and they are even talking about like this whole idea of sleep debt. Like, oh, you can make up time to sleep. You can't. This is what he said. He's like, you can't make up. Like you can't say I didn't get any time sleep this week. So I'm going to make up for it now. Your body physically can't do that. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we can't do that. Right. Yeah. It's not like a bank account. It's one of these things where we don't ever get to make that stuff up again, not to scare you, but we want to get in front of it and start controlling the things that we can control, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, tip number seven. I love this. Teresa does not love this. And that is like, try and keep the degrees in your room between 60 and 68. <laughs> All the sleep in a sleeping bag on top of a blanket. 60 <laughs> and 68, because there is a certain temperature that our body, once again, like our body, we, we kind of didn't talk about this, but our body has receptors on it, believe it or not, not just our eyes, but actually has receptors. And when we get into the sunlight, it activates these receptors, which is why we're we able to get that. like vitamin D's, vitamin D and trans translate it into actual usable vitamin D in our body, right? But when we go out into the sun, we have those receptors, right? Those same receptors apply when we're at home inside of our house, right? And so one of those receptors is also the temperature. If it gets to a certain degree, what does that mean? Well, it's probably the sun's out. Right. If it gets to a drops below a certain amount, it probably means that it's a certain temperature or a certain um, time of night. And that's the way our body can really like um, uh, use this information. It uses it. And how many of you guys are like, I didn't even know my body did this. My body's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what it does. It's like their circadian rhythm is we're around based off of the sun. When the sun's up, we're up. When the sun's gone, we're not. And anything that it can do, any information, it's going to try and program it into your subconscious and automatically it's going to get you to think, oh, between 60 and 68, we can have a deeper sleep, right? Now, Teresa That's doesn't really, really like, cold. yeah, sorry. she doesn't really like 68. <laughs> At 72, she's like, it's freezing in yeah, here, but it's okay. She'll put on some extra jackets. <laughs> but this is an important part of the process. Um, and if you can, get it to that lower degree, I really want you to check in to see like how much of an impact that that actually makes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. The last tip. All right. The last tip is minimal light. Yes. So I have a problem with this too, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this isn't about me. <laughs> this is just general tips, right? But um, there is also science behind the light and actually not just like light in your room when you're trying to go to sleep, but the actual, like the type of light, yeah. right? So um, if you can't block out like all of the light from your room and be like pitch black, which is probably the optimal, um, I think they said red, red mm -hmm. light is, um, is best. Um, but the thing is, is that you, you do want to have like your environment be pretty dark mm -hmm. so that your body, it can allow your body to actually go to sleep and stay asleep. Yeah. Yeah. We got, um, we got some like dark um, blackout curtains and then we decided that we were going to get one of those plantation shutters. What are mm -hmm. they called? Because we thought those were ones that actually could block the light out. But because of me literally going to sleep, like in the middle of the day, sometimes it doesn't really work so well, but like those blackout curtains, 100%, especially when I was on shift work and I would come home at 8 AM in the morning. Like the worst feeling is when you're driving home and the sun's coming up. Yeah. I just got to call out to that. It is the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> and then you get home and you've got kids and they're small and they want to play and they want to laugh and they want to joke and they want to do all those things. And your, your house isn't as big as a mansion. So you hear everybody <laughs> like one of the best things you can do is get some type of curtain to black it out as close to night as possible. Now, this isn't going to be exactly like, Oh my God, like I'm just getting so much great sleep, but it is much better than trying to go to sleep when the sun is like still out. Your body's going to be trying to tell you, no, it's time to wake up, even though you're going to be physically and mentally exhausted, right? So those are our strategies. Let's go through them one more time. All right. Tip number one is get more sun early upon waking up. Tip two is avoid electronics 90 minutes before bed. Tip three is avoid uh, caffeine up to eight hours before bed. Tip number four is get your money sleep zone in between 10, 8, 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Uh, tip five is we sleep in 1.5 hour sleep cycles. 
Tip six is consistently go to bed and wake up at the same time or at least within that hour. Um, tip seven is 60 to 68 degrees in your room. And tip number eight is minimal light. You want to have as minimal light as possible when you're sleeping. Um, we even have since like, um, like turned off like night lights, anything we possibly can that could potentially wake us up. Um, we've completely eliminated it. And, and I do want to share like one thing, like, um, you guys might, um, I mean, I, I've said this a couple different times, like one of the ways that you can track, like what of this is working, what's not working, how much sleep you got. Um, of course, if you have an Apple watch, that will be the first step, but it's very inaccurate. The Apple Watch, believe it or not, is highly inaccurate when it comes to your sleep cycles. Um, when it comes to like there's different apps and stuff, we've tried all of the different apps. But there is one thing that I have found that has worked really, really well. And I didn't give Kurt this, but let me do it right now. Modernleadership.us forward slash aura. So one of the things that I have that actually helps me track sleep is called an aura ring. Okay. I think you get $50 off if you use that link. It's an, it's called an aura ring. And what it does is it's just a ring that you wear on. It has like three or four days worth of battery life. You don't have to charge it like maybe once every couple of days and you wear it when you're sleeping. And when I wake up, what I can do is I open up my app and I check this every day and it tells me how I did yesterday when it comes to my movement, but also how I did related to, um, the sleep that I got, what quality sleep did I get? What sleep cycle was I in? Did I sleep enough? Did I get enough REM sleep? Did I get enough deep sleep? And it basically allows me to go back and go, oh, yesterday I ate too close to bedtime, <clears throat> which is another thing that I do sometimes. If I eat too close to bedtime, my sleep cycles are way off. And I'm like, ah, oh, I've got to stop doing it. And so now it helps me bring that information into the next day. So having some way of tracking it, yes, you can like write out and say, oh, how am I doing here? How am I doing there? And you can write it out and see, you know, how you feel one day to the next. But I had a problem figuring out like, do I feel better than yesterday? Worse than yesterday? And so what I did is I actually got this ring. I, I forget exactly how much it is, like three or $400. But it's one of those things is once you get it and you get access to the app, you can also check in all the time. And one of the things that this thing does, it doesn't say that it does this, but it, it really does, is it checks your temperature, your body temperature. Mm. And it can share when there's a variation in it and when you, it's thinking that you're going to get sick. This thing actually like diagnosed me with like getting sick like two days before I actually got COVID. It was like, um, your temperature is a little bit raised. You should take it easy today. And I'm like, what? I feel like a million bucks, right? <laughs> and the next day I like came down with COVID for the first time. So it's one of those things where it tracks all of these different things just by having it be on your ring finger. I would highly suggest that you order. There's like a, a free um, ring sizing thing where they send you rings to put on and that you get one that's not too loose, but also not too like tight if that's something you decide to do. Because if you do get it and it's too tight during winter, it, it like your, your, your body will shrink a little bit. And so it'll be looser, but during summertime, it'll like balloon up. And then before you know it, you can't get the ring off. All right. So definitely try it. Um, and there you go. It's aura. O U R A. There you go, Steve. So modernleadership.us forward slash O U R A. Um, it's definitely really, really powerful ring, especially if you're struggling with sleep that will tell you what to do, what things not to do and vice versa. And, um, I think Teresa's going to check it out yeah, let me real quick. Check. All right, guys, um, I want to hear from you. Based off of what we talked about today, what are one to two things that you're going to do moving forward with this information? Like it's it's great to be on here and to hear all of these different things about how we can maximize our health, how can we can be, be more productive. But we want to hear what are one to two things, we want to hear it in the chat, that you're going to implement moving forward from this call. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull our card of the week. So everybody who doesn't know, we have a card of the week that we get to pull and ask our family questions during dinner time. Ooh. No, they don't need to hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, guys, this is actually for you guys today. This is actually for our parents and stuff that are out there today. Oh, and Teresa gave the, uh, put the link up there, modernleadership.us forward slash O-U-R-A. I think it's $50 off for that. Okay. So the question of the day for today is what do you find most rewarding about being a parent? What do you find most rewarding about being a parent? What do you think? Hmm. 
What do you find most rewarding? I think that every day you can make a difference in your kid's life that will help them in adulthood. You mm-hmm. know, like every day is an opportunity, right? Not because we can get into the whole, oh man, like I messed this up, mm-hmm. right? Or, oh my, like what kind of tra- trauma did I, you know, create for my my kids moving forward? But I think that thinking about it in the sense of, oh, I have an opportunity to either connect with them in a better way or just be the role model that they need, I think is the most rewarding. I like it as Rocket is biting my biting my hands. Um, I really, I have something very, very similar. And that is like, every day is kind of like an opportunity to teach them through my own actions. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the things that I wish I had learned when I was smaller, right? Mm-hmm. Um, today, for example, like once we get done here, uh, we are going to go into the garage and we're going to have an assembly line because <laughs> Mark has 600 of his books that he needs to sign and get shipped into the mail. And we have some stickers that we need to add to it and the kids are going to help, right? It's one of those things where I feel like when they get involved in parts of the business that they get to do, when they get involved, even on YouTube, and we're thinking about actually having them come here and be on one of our YouTube lives if they're willing to do that because they are a little nervous. Um, they're in high school now, or at least one of them is. It uh, doesn't like being seen on camera, but when we get an opportunity to do that, we can teach them like the kind of impact that they can make just by sharing my book with them inside of Mm -hmm. like, uh, Andrew has read my book, right? Mm -hmm. But them getting to see us shipping the books out and thinking about the 600 people's lives that we're going to help make an impact with, right? Because we're going to give them a copy of the book and they're going to get an opportunity to read it is really awesome. And then also we pay them with like food afterwards. (laughs) We're going to go to like lazy dog or something like that. My kids always like to go out to eat and stuff. We don't do it that often. Um, but they get to like, they like to get paid that way, but really being able to have that opportunity, not only to share what we're doing in the business with them, but have them be a part of it and then share messages when people message me back of like, Oh my God, your book, it helped me so much. And then getting to say, Hey, Andrew, you're like, you're one of the people who made this happen because you were the one who put it together. You're the one who packaged it. You're the one who it's just, it's, it's a great feeling to get to experience that. And, um, definitely something they can see like, Hey, I can make an impact and this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. So I really love that a lot. Um, Just a side note, um, for those of you guys who are in the inner circle, um, I posted up uh, this morning about how to get a free copy of my book. I actually have the audio book and the PDF version. We just updated it. Um, Go into the app. You can see how to get a free copy of it. And then of course, if you ever want a copy of the actual book, you can go to Amazon. Mastering Your Life Through Self-Coaching is the name of the book. So um, I appreciate you guys so much. Anything else you want to lead us out of here? No. What? Go get some sleep. <laughs> Go get some sleep just right now, right now, because yeah. the sun is out. Um, but I appreciate you guys for leaning in, for always getting uncomfortable and for continuing to show up the way that you show up. Um, next week, we really do have a powerful call for our inner circle only. So if you're in the inner circle, what we're going to be talking about is challenges and how Teresa and I can help you through those specific challenges related to your health, related to your business, mm-hmm. related to wealth, related to your family connections. We're actually going to have a live call only specifically for you to answer all of your questions and help coach and inspire and motivate you through the challenges that you're going through. If you're not a part of the inner circle, definitely sign up. Um, You can click the join button below this video, and then we will see you on next weekend's call. If you're not a part of the inner circle, join us in two weeks. We'll have another call here. Appreciate you guys so much for everything you do. Keep leading from the front. And Kurt, I got done in 45 minutes. All right, bye everybody. Bye.